Hey y'all, it is Vincent, that real Vinny Van guy. Decided to do another installment of my life story tonight. And, <clears throat> you know, I guess, to be honest, my life is probably not a whole lot different than many of your lives. Um, I've experienced all the ups and all the downs. I've had pretty good money. Not necessarily wealth, but there had been times where I had a lot of money to me, and there have been times that I've had nothing and I've had to walk the streets at night. I remember when I was young, you heard in my first installment, I uh, slept behind a Safeway. I was a homeless kid. I ran away, did not want to move where my mom and sister were moving to. I wanted to stay put. So I left and it wasn't my greatest moment, that's for sure. And I regret doing it, absolutely. I've been through a lot of ups and downs, but during those times, I would find myself lighting matchbooks, getting free matchbooks from the, from the liquor stores and lighting magazines and old newspapers on fire to keep warm at night. And I was so hungry many times. I had no money, no job, no food. And uh, my pet's heads were falling off. No, they weren't. That's a funny movie though. Um, we got no job. <laughs> you can't help it. Sorry. But, uh, yeah, I had no job, I had no money, I had no food. I didn't have any pets. But there was one day I was walking. You know, as I said, I slept behind a Safeway grocery store for a period of time. There was this big generator back there, so I would just cozy up to it. It was warmed up at night. And I actually kept warm next to that thing. It was amazing. And it had this hum, you know? It would, you know, it would hum. <laughs> and it was back behind the store. Bushes all around it on the corner that it was at behind. And there were the dumpsters and the truck you know, where the trucks back down, there's a dock, and some of the trucks would get unloaded right there off the dock. But there were, you know, four or five dumpsters out there as well. One day I was walking, I was super hungry. I was so hungry. I hadn't ate for three days. I think it was three whole days that I didn't eat at one time. Three entire days. So I was, I woke up and I had been three days of no eating. I was so hungry. And there was this homeless guy walking and he was crossing the street at the same time that I was. And I said, how you doing, sir? He said, I'm doing great. I'm about ready to go get me some food. And I was like, yeah, wish I could. Super hungry. He goes, you haven't eaten? I said, no, I haven't eaten for three days. And he said, today's your lucky day. I go to this place called the Salad Bowl, and I'm gonna take you with me. And I was like, yeah, let's go. So we proceeded to get the green walk sign, and we walked across the intersection there, and started going into where we go back behind Safeway on North Main Street in Salinas, California. And I was following him. And he was walking toward the back of Safeway, and he kept walking right toward the dumpsters. And when he got to the dumpster, he stopped and flipped open the lid and jumped in. He said, this is the salad bowl. I said, what? I literally was like, what, man? And he goes, yeah, you would not believe the good food that they throw away. <laughs> You know, I might have been homeless and hungry, but I would, I was, that was not even 
close to being on my mind, sifting through a dumpster behind a grocery store. But he was right. He was pulling out all kinds of stuff, cookies and cakes and bread that was sealed, just thrown out because it was old. And some of it, like some of the cakes or cookies, might have had a little opening on it and there were just a little broken glass or something. He'd, he's all, this is good. And he was eating it. And I said, no, thank you, sir. But I appreciate the thought. And I just said, you enjoy. And by then he had pulled out fruit and vegetables and cake and cookies, bread, some boxed items that you had to cook. He had all kinds of stuff. That guy was not kidding. He was gonna be okay. I'm sure he was. I'm sure he ate well while he was alive and living on the street. But for me, I was like, oh um, no, not for me. So uh, what what ended up happening, I would, there was a Togo's Eatery, which was a sandwich shop in California. And I went all day and I was so hungry. I didn't know what I was gonna do, I was starving. And uh, the people at the end of day at Togo's were bringing out the trash and I saw them, they had a big giant bag of bread that they were throwing out. And I said, are you throwing all that out? And they said, yes, we are. I'm all, do you mind if I have a couple of those loaves? And they let me have whatever I wanted and I ate bread. I never starved to death, but I would not stoop to digging through a dumpster. That's a good story. Um, I did end up roaming the streets for quite a time until I did get my uh, my Pinto station wagon. I spent about a year living in that, the one I traded for. And, uh, you know, eventually that thing was just, it was just dead. I didn't know how to fix stuff, so. And I didn't have any money to fix it up. And I don't know how I got the money to drive around. Change, I'd get a couple of dollars here and there and throw gas in. Of course, gas was, you know, 49 cents a gallon or something back in those days. And uh, I um, graduated up a little bit. I met some people from a, from my first band, Vision. I didn't meet them, I, I knew them and uh, ended up through different circumstances uh, getting a place with one of the guys and we kind of roommated in that town for a while. And I worked my way up. I got a job at, a ga at the gas station, 24 hour Chevron. I got a job at the Salinas California newspaper working in the mornings. I had a graveyard job and a morning job for a few hours making the newspapers in the mail room. And I remember I did that for a while, two jobs. I ended up getting my mom co-signed for me for a Volkswagen bug and that bug you know keep in mind I was starting out of my first band and I started a second band with this guy who ended up being the bass player who I room, roomed with and I had this Volkswagen bug and I was working my way up I was just you know things were were happening and I came to a point where I had a car accident and I almost died. I should have died. Many said that uh, whatever happened there, but I had an experience a couple times before that event. One, and this is having to do with faith and, and just supernatural. I was young and I was a Christian guy I'd struggled back and forth, you know, doing what I thought was right and doing the bad thing, coming back and forth, you know. Um, but I was staying at one of my mom's friends just for a period of time. And I had this Volkswagen uh, bug and um, I was really sick one morning when I woke up to go to work. I was super sick. I woke up just filled with phlegm, my head, 
everything. I felt like I had a fever. I was coughing and sneezing my head off. I was sicker than a dog and I could not miss work. And I remember saying, oh God, please take this from me. I have to go to work. I cannot miss work. And I conked out and I had a dream. This is, it's like clear as day to me still. All these years later, keep in mind I was 18 years old and I had anywhere to stay. I was staying at my, my mom's friend's house and I had this dream when I conked out. And the dream was that an angel came and went in my mouth and went down inside and took all the sickness out of me. And I woke up going, <gasps> and I started feeling my chest and breathing and it was gone. And I woke up after I was supposed to be at work. So I was late. I became late to work, but I went to work and I was fully healed. I wasn't sick at all. It wasn't a dream. The dream was the angel. I woke up to go to work to to my alarm. I remember this alarm I had. It was this little battery operated thing. It was like, doo -doo 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 -doo. it was so annoying. It was like the worst thing. Like I eventually, I think I threw that thing really hard into the ground. I was tired of hearing that noise. <laughs> so uh, anyway, I got up and I went to work and I was healed and I was amazed. I never forgot that dream. And uh, another night I worked graveyard shift part-time. I switched off. We went like a couple weeks. I had another guy that switched off with me that worked daytime and then he worked graveyard shift. But I worked graveyard shift and I was really battling in my spirit about certain things. And I was listening to a lot of uh, Metal Shop. You remember that? I don't know if you remember Metal Shop, but it was a show that played heavy metal music at night. Like I think it was midnight and the heavy metal music came on. And I was listening to a lot of stuff that was just good stuff, you know? But I was kind of freaking out because I started hearing this show on, um, it was uh, a show on like demonic rock and roll and backward masking and music that had messages inside of it if you played the record backwards and stuff. And I just remembered hearing a Beatles song on that show that said, number nine, number nine. Now, I forget what it was, but I just remember number nine. And I just had all these thoughts of darkness and I'm sitting in this bulletproof booth that was open 24 hours a day. I'm dealing with people all night. These are crazy people coming from the Natividad Medical Center that were in this mental hospital there that would escape at night and come out. There was a couple guys that always would come to the, to the gas station and some of them would give me a hard time and others would just freak me out because they were nuts. This one guy, I remember his name was Hal, he would drink like a whole bottle of vodka right in front of me and just freak out outside the booth, you know. Just stuff like that was happening. But this particular night, I was in the booth and in front of me were three pumps, or two pumps. And each pump had two numbers. And and I had another full row over here with one, two, three, four, I think four or five pumps. And these were one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, I think. And then I had up to 15 on the other side in an intercom that I could talk to any, any one island that I wanted to talk to. But all of these pumps conveyed themselves onto my computer screen in a little design, showing the ones in front of me, on the side of me and behind me, and they were all numbered. And that night I was freaking out, right? <laughs> And I'm sitting in the booth. Nobody's coming for hours. I'm about ready to just trip. I was just freaking out. It was just a freaky night. I had a lot, all kind of weird, spooky feelings. And in front of me was the number six. And 
it would, I guess it ended in six. And then over here we had pump number seven or five or five, six, or six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15 behind me. And um, so nobody was there. And in order to signal my computer that somebody was trying to lift the nozzle without paying first, like if somebody was back on 15 and they pulled up the handle to pump their gas and they flipped the switch, it would go blank, blank, blank. A little man would do that on the screen. And I would say, you gotta pay first. Prepay it before you pump. Thank you. So, I mean, it was like yesterday. So I've got this pump in front of me, side of me, behind me. Nobody anywhere to be seen. And number six on my screen, the one right in front of me, starts blinking. And I was like, oh no, you don't. <laughs> I said, not today, Satan. And I was like, I was flipping out. Like, I have chills right now thinking about it. Because I looked and I realized within about a second and a half that somebody had to have pulled that nozzle off in order for me to get that signal on my screen. Number six was blinking. And I was like, oh, no. And I started yelling at the devil. And I was upset. You know, I'm... 17, 18 year old kid. No, I wasn't even that old yet. I was 16, 17, I guess so. Um, I'm looking forward. Yeah, I worked three and a half years at that shop, at that barber or, um, gas station. But I looked and I started just saying the things that I knew scripturally to that pump and it stopped. And I was freaking out, looking around outside. It was dark and Suddenly, I saw something out of the corner of my eye that was very tall. And when I looked over at pump number seven, it was this giant white angel. I'm not playing. I'm not telling funny stories. I'm not making this up. I couldn't see details. All I could see was a glow. And it was probably 15 foot tall. And it hovered over number seven pump. And I was like, oh God, oh God, oh God, oh God. And then I heard the beeping again on my screen and I looked up and number seven was blinking. Blink, 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 blink. Nobody was there. Nobody was on some, on pump seven. And I went, oh, thank you, God. Oh, I was just like, what the heck? And I looked back after looking at the screen at seven and I was like, oh, number seven, the angel. I look over and it was gone. It was just like, Phew. that was the craziest thing ever. I remember it. You can ask me in 10 years and I'll tell you the same exact story. It was real. I was freaking out. Does God care about you? Yes, he does. Even the small little stupid things that make you freak out because we're dumb humans. Uh, he cares. And he was looking at me. He was watching me, he was assuring me, I feel, that uh, I was on the right track, I was gonna be okay. And um, that gas station had a lot of action, spiritually. Darkness, demonic things that hovered around it at night. It was the freakiest thing. And you know, I'm not a ghost chaser or anything like that, but there were heroin addicts and drunks and crazy people from the hospital and possessed people, like literally possessed. And things would happen there at night when you were there at graveyard. So I had a graveyard shift. It wasn't very long after that, that um, I had a car accident in my bug and I hit a dog going about 65 miles an hour down a country road, Natividad Road. Was it Natividad Road? Russell Road. I think it might have been Natividad and Russell was the crossroad. It was been a lot of years. I was 18 years old. But my bug, I loved the bug. My mom helped me buy it. I had a job. I paid $66 and something cents a month as a payment. I mean, we paid like 2500 for it, I think, 3000 And I had this small payment. 
was 166, sorry, $166. Literally 60 something dollars more per month than I made a week at that point at that job. I remember getting, no, I, I made $107 a week when I worked full time at that job as a cashier. When I got bumped up to 425 and I did part time during the day working the, the pumps and pumping gas and checking oil and stuff, I was making 425. So I went from, you know, the $107 to whatever it was. Um, so one of my checks almost paid for my car payment <laughs> back in the day. But uh, I ended up hitting a dog and I remember seeing the dog and I had the band Striper, which was a Christian metal band. I had them cranked up in my car and the song Reach Out was playing. I reach out, you reach out. It was a poppy, it was sung a lot better than that. But it was a poppy tune that was just do, 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 do. And I was jamming 65 miles an hour down this road. And a black lab, a big dog, was way up ahead of me crossing the road, slow as could be. And I don't know what happened. It's like something steered me right at it. And I ended up hitting it on the the other inside of the other lane. It was a two lane road. I crossed over the double lines to hit that dog. I'm not sure where I was at. My mind wandered and something pulled me toward it. And right before I hit that dog, I saw another angel that closed my eyes with his two fingers and said, you don't need to see this. And I ended up hitting that dog. My left leg slipped off the brake and somehow landed, ended up underneath the brake pedal and on the accelerator broken after hitting the dog. It snapped and went underneath and on the acceler accelerator. And I sped up to well over 70 when I hit the curb on the corner and jumped a little creek through a fence and hit the house on the corner. I hit the gas lines of that house. And when I woke up, I was halfway through the window of my VW bug and the rest of it, the bubble, the round roof was crushed around me like a figure eight. So one, the passenger side of the windshield was smushed down and I was out the one figure eight side, the top of the driver's side and the car was upside down pointing toward the street. All I could hear when I woke up was the sound of the wheels still being driven by acceleration. And the engine was going like I was going however fast. And I can hear the gas lines that I hit of the house. And I was like, hey man, I, I, I gotta get out of here. Literally, I was thinking to myself, and I feel like my talking was like groggy as if I had just smoked a big joint or something. And I was pulling myself out, trying to pull myself. And the more I pulled, I felt this really hot heat on my leg and I couldn't pull, I was stuck. I was laying there on my back and I was out of the window and I'm looking up at the front wheel, one over here maybe, and I could see part of the back. I could see the car and I was out the windshield. And I, this lady walks up with this cigarette and her hand was shaking. Are you okay? I said, lady, <laughs> what does it look like? 
can you not smoke, please? <laughs> and she had the cigarette lit, and I'm hearing this gas and the spinning of the wheel, and she's like, are you okay? Eh? I'm just like, what is happening? True story. True story. The cops came, the sirens came, the fire engines came, the guys rolled up, they took the jaws of life, they couldn't pull me out, they took the jaws of life and they cut through whatever they had to cut through to pull me out and untangle my leg from the pedals. There was a picture in the newspaper of the fireman holding my hand, comforting me. I told them that my mom was at my friend's house around the corner. Our best friends, her best friends, the Burks, were right around the corner. I was heading there to talk to her, actually, that morning. She was, I thought, spending the night there. So I was heading there when I hit that dog in that house. I told them, my mom's at, I knew the number by heart. It was 449-1205. I still remember it. I told him, call this number, my mom's there. My mom is there, she'll come. And I guess they called the number and then the next thing you know, I'm looking up and I see Bill, the man of that house. And my mom wasn't at that house anymore. I guess he had gone home that night, the night before and didn't stay. But Bill came and he's known me my whole life up to that point. He looked down at me straight in the face and said, that's not my son. I don't even know who that is. That's how I looked. <laughs> my face was full of glass and I was swollen and blood everywhere. He didn't recognize me. He was walking away and I'm like, no, Bill, Bill. I was calling out to him because I was like, hello. Uh, somebody Recognize me, please. And uh, he didn't. He kept going. And I was like, I know that person. And I was so groggy. I don't know if they gave me something. I just remember I was in shock. They got me out. I was in the ambulance. I remember all the swerving and all the... And the next thing I know, I was in the hospital, waiting to be seen, coming in and out of consciousness. And I was in a hallway with a bunch of other gurneys looking up at the lights at the ceiling going, what is happening? Are they going to let me die here? And I slept, the people came in and out, I was in and out of consciousness. That was a gnarly thing, now that I really think about it, going back, in my mind, it was crazy how I felt. I had to have been in and out of consciousness. And they just left me sitting in the hallway on a gurney, laid out. So I was like, uh, I hope this, somebody comes to me before, you know, it's too late. And then I finally, I woke up and I was in a room. My mom was there. Uh, my sister was there. I think my sister was there. Uh, my girlfriend came at the time. And everybody was like, oh, oh. And I looked down on my leg. My foot was pointing. I was straight up like this. And my foot was pointing completely to the left. And I realized then that I broke my tibia and fibula. Snapped my leg, lower leg, both bones. And the leg was pointing. It was not much different than some of these UFC fighters that bust their leg up. Um, but, you know, I had also got concussions and glass in my face and, you know, my whole chest was purple because I shoved the steering wheel of that bug about three feet up into the front trunk with my chest and then exited the window like a bad dude. I don't remember it. But I should have died. I could have died. I don't know what happened. But from that day on, I realized that there was a reason why I was still here. It had to be. I mean... The angel closed my eyes and I, uh, I woke up. That was a neat experience. All those experiences with angels and miracles. Pretty great, huh? Yeah. Through all those things, I, I gained a particular confidence, 
a different kind of confidence that I gained from those guys who told me to never stop singing, that I would be great one day, and that I was going to be big. Uh, a different thing. It was it was a knowing. It was also a slap in the face for how I'd been living, and just my life uh, path at that point. And I changed it up substantially, and I really got serious about music about that time. We formed a different band called Full Armor, and it was pretty great. I did uh, at one point show pictures, but maybe you can see these pictures. That's a picture of me in the middle there, right there in the middle with my little nipple hanging out my shirt. That's Full Armor. And the guy on the far uh, left is Dion, the roommate and the bass player. This one is of me in front of a large crowd in 1990, about 15,000 people. I got my hands up in the air on that one. I don't know if you can even see it. I might be, uh, yeah, I might be having a wrong angle or it's too dark but that's that so we'll talk more about music next time i guess 31 minutes hello somebody gonna watch this i don't know but that's installment two hope you enjoyed it it's a trip thinking back on some of these experiences ha huh, i do appreciate all of you thanks so much for being awesome and for hitting the like button and doing all the good things with those buttons because that is what I want and I need. Okay. All right. Thanks again. Talk to you guys later. Bye.